Isaiah 40 says, Have you not known, have you not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not faint, nor is he weary? His understanding is inscrutable. He gives power to the faint, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, but the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Let us worship our everlasting God.
With one touch, I am made whole. You have spoken, and I know that it is so. In this story. Well, hello everyone. Here we are once again, uh, coming to you live, uh, live streaming. It's a new experience for for us. I suppose it's a new experience for for all of us. But uh, the Lord is good, and uh, certainly His mercy does endure. Hallelujah! Even through all the difficulties that uh, people face, and the uh, the COVID nineteen uh, quarantine. Today we're going to continue uh, with the Shepherd series that we started a few weeks ago. Uh, I think that uh, we've covered the first three or four verses. There are six verses in this uh, psalm. And today, Lynn is going to teach on, uh, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And uh, I'm sure you're going to be blessed by the message. And I'm looking forward to hearing it. And uh, as I know you are. And so without further ado, I'm going to let Lynn go ahead and take over. God bless you. Well, it's good to be back with you today. Um, I'm really privileged to bring the word to you once again. Thank God for his word. And I, as I was preparing for this message, I was thinking about Psalm 23 and just how much revelation there is in this psalm. There's only six verses, but it's incredible. And I begin to realize is that Psalm 23 is really the story of the believer. And there's some things I want to highlight uh, before I get into goodness and mercy. But the first of all, the number one thing is the Lord is our shepherd. The verse one says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, I remember when I accepted Christ into my heart in January 1974. And I realized after I had the born again experience and he became Lord, I surrendered my heart and asked him to become my Lord. I knew I would not want anymore. My search was over. That I had found the true God, Jesus Christ. And I love that because that's the number one thing we have to do in our lives. Jesus said in John 14 that no one comes to the Father except through him. He's the way, the truth, and he's the door. And so that's the number one thing you see in this Psalm 23. Then it says he makes me to lie down in green pastures. You know, when, when I read that, I realized... Accepting Christ, I had green pastures, and I was led beside still waters. My struggle with sin, that burden of sin, was lifted off me. And I had peace that I never experienced in my life when I met Jesus. He gave me peace that passes all understanding. And that's what he does when we accept him as Lord of our life. He's the good shepherd. And then it says, he restores my soul. Now, this is a continual work that the Holy Spirit does. 
He is constantly, cont continually restoring our souls. The soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. And God is uh, very, um, he wants to make sure that we are made whole, that he, we have a sound mind, that our emotional health is healthy, whole, where we don't have to keep experiencing traumatic experiences that we had before we knew him. Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. And so he wants to restore us completely and bring us into the paths of righteousness where we begin to understand who we are in him and that all the sin, all the burdens, everything has been lifted from us through the finished work of the cross. And so this is a continual thing that will take place in our life until we finally go to be with the Lord face to face. And then the third thing it says, and we're, a lot of us are experiencing this right now. It says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You know, troubles come, trials come. And it's because we live in this world. Jesus said that we are in the world, but we're not of the world. We are seated in heavenly places. We are children as believers of the kingdom of God, which will go on eternally. This world will pass. And as we pass through this valley, notice in that verse, in verse, in verse three, it says, he didn't call it the mountain experience. He said the valley. And when is it that we need the Lord the most? When we walk through the valleys in our life. We walk through the valley with the shadow of death. And it says, I will fear no evil. That's what God wants us to understand. Do not be afraid of this pandemic. Do not be afraid of sickness and disease. It says, for you are with me. His presence is with us. His rod and his staff, that's his word. You see, the word of God will comfort you. The word of God will bless you. That's why we have to keep our eyes focused on God and his word. If we focus on the present circumstances, we can get in fear. But God wants us to look up and remember the promise because God is faithful to his word and he's with us. One of the names of God is Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is present. And that's a great comfort to know as we walk through, we're passing through these valleys as we go through the difficulties, as we walk through the troubles, the tribulations, the persecutions, Jesus is with us and he is leading us through the valleys. Amen. That's a good word. And then Pastor Will taught and he's done the whole series. If you want, if you're just checking in with us and you want to hear the whole series on these verses, you can go to our link word of grace fellowship we're on youtube and you can catch these messages because they've been very powerful and very encouraging and then it says don't get up from the table that was the name of the message he did last week and i love this because god has a table set for you and i as believers to sit down and feast on his word Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from God. The word of God. We are to feed our spirit. We are to, you know, we are a spirit. We have a soul and we live in a body. And our spirit needs to be fed daily. Because it's our spirit man that will keep us strong as we face these situations. And so for us to have faith and be able to overcome, we need to sit at the table that God has prepared, this table for each and every one of us, and receive the daily bread, and receive the anointing, and receive the blessing that he has as we read his word and meditate on his word and declare his word. It says, he prepares a table before me, in the presence of my enemies and he anoints our head with oil 
That's the Holy Spirit. And our cups overflow. How hungry are you for God? That's what determines how much you have God in your life. You need to have a passion and a hunger to hear what God is saying in this, in this time and hour. And you'll hear his voice. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And we hear his voice by studying the word of God. Because in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And the more of the word, the more we sit at this table and feast on God's word, the more revelation we have when we begin to understand how wonderful God is. And then the last one that I'm going to share a little bit on, it says, surely, this is verse 6, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, I've declared that over my life. I love to think of, I'm just use your spiritual imagination right now, that Jesus, you're following Jesus as a believer, we're called to be followers of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is leading us every day. Every day he leads and he guides us. He's the Lord. Lord means master. I'm not master of my life. Jesus is Lord of my life. And he's master. And when he says, go here, I go. And when he says, I want you to spend more time with me, I do that. We need to be led by Jesus as followers of Christ. And Jesus, as we follow him through this journey of life, the word says, as we continue to go through the valleys and we feast on God's word, you see, the more you follow God, the more goodness and mercy will follow you. And I love to think of that, that goodness and mercy are behind me. And wherever I go, as I follow Jesus, goodness and mercy are following me and that's a promise and not only that that we will dwell with the lord forever after this life is done we'll be with jesus but while we're here in this earth and we are sojourning goodness and mercy are following us as we follow jesus and so i just want to break this uh scripture apart a little bit and share a little more of the revelation that the Lord has given me about it. It starts out surely. I love that word surely. The word surely in the Hebrew is ach and it means a foundational assurance certainly nevertheless truly and verily. So you can translate this verse certainly. I like that. That assurance certainly God's goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And then in the midst of uncertainty, and listen, we are living in uncertain times right now. I mean, many people from this lockdown, they have lost their jobs. They don't know how they're going to make it financially. People are going through desperate times right now. This is really, in my life, I've never experienced anything like this in my life. This is a great time of uncertainty in the world. But at the same time, God's word is a certainty. You can put all your stock in the word of God. Because the word of God is true. And the word of God will not return void. So as believers, our faith has to be in God and his promise. And as we declare his promise, and as we trust God, God will make a way. Goodness and mercy will follow us. You see, God is a good God. We say that in churches all the time. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. But it's during times like this, do we really believe that? Our faith is going to be tried and tested. It's through these uncertain times right now. God is good, no matter what the circumstances say, no matter what you feel, no matter what you're going through, God is still good. That's who God is. He's good. And I want to look at this word goodness. 
it says goodness in the it really means the essence of God's nature everything about God is good now God has given us his word in Hebrews 6 verse 13 to 14 it says for when God made a promise to Abraham because he could swear by no one greater that's powerful he swore by himself saying surely certainly blessing I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply you the word goodness is found over 700 references to the word goodness and good in scripture now the word good entails perfection it means to be complete whole sound and helpful you see God God wants us to experience that he wants us whole he wants us sound he wants us healthy it also means abundance you know this year I was praying every year I always ask the Lord to give me one word and this year despite what I'm going through and all these circumstances the Lord gave me a word this year and the word was abundance and I am still believing God this is going to be a great year of abundance this year is not over yet. We started out with this whole thing and it looks bad. But I'll tell you what, God is still able to shift and bring the blessings to his people. There's no lack in heaven. And as it is on earth, in heaven, let it be on earth. All we need to do is start declaring and believing. And God knows how to supernaturally bring us abundance. It starts with abundance in the word of God. Abundance in the anointing, abundance in the presence, abundance in our finances, abundance in our health, abundance in our relationship, in our family. God is a God of abundance. Even during times of famine in the Bible, people still receive supernaturally miracles. Elijah with the widow. They never ran out of food. God is an abundant God because he's a good God. That goodness of God is following us as believers wow you should be shouting right now that's an exciting word and God wants you to get that in your spirit and you need to start declaring it every day every day goodness and mercy are following you because you're following Jesus good is the exact opposite of evil you know God gets blamed too many times for all the evil in the world don't be misled. In James 1, verse 16 and 17, it says, Don't be misled or seduced or deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect comes to us from God the Father. God is good. God is not the author of sickness. Some people think God gives them sickness to teach them lessons. Well, I've got good news for you. Acts 10, verse 38, it's one of my most favorite scriptures in the New Testament. It says how God anointed Jesus who went about healing all that were sick and oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Now, if Jesus went about healing all that were sick and oppressed of the devil... Don't you think he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Don't you think that if Jesus was taking sickness off people, he's not the author of sickness. Sickness comes from the evil one. The devil comes to oppress. This COVID is from the pit of hell. This is not from God. God does not have to teach his children lessons by them getting sick. God teaches us through his word. Amen? And so we want to walk close to Jesus through these difficult times. We don't want to get away from walking after God. You know, sometimes we can miss it and we stop trusting God and our actions and we can open up the door to be attacked because there are repercussions to our actions. But if you have a heart after God and a hunger for God and you just keep trusting him and following him through your valley and speaking his word 
and worshiping him in the circumstance. Worship him in those times that uh, you don't know where your next meal is coming from. I've been there. I know what that's like. I know what it's like not to have funds, not to know if you're going to be able to feed your children. I've been through that. But I know one thing, God is faithful, and God will make a way for his children. There's this beautiful song, so annoying, how God is the way maker, the miracle worker. He's the one that opens the doors. He's the one that gives us opportunities. He sees our needs. And so I want you to keep trusting that God is good all the time. And all the time, right now, in this lockdown, God is good. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. And so God is good. So in 2 Corinthians verse cha uh, chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, it says, But even if our gospel is in some sense hidden and behind a veil, it is hidden only to those who are perishing. Among them, the God of this world, Satan, has blinded the minds of the unbelieving. You notice that? Satan comes to blind people's minds to the truth about Jesus Christ because they're unbelieving. The way into the kingdom is through faith. That's why Jesus said you have to become like a small child to enter the kingdom of God. Children don't question. When their parents tell them something, they don't question it. They believe it. And that's how we have to become. We have to humble ourselves and become like children. And accept God's word and believe God said it. I believe it. That settles it. And so Satan can't block us and deceive us because we believe God's word. We take him at his word. And it says, the reason why Satan does this, blinds the minds of the unbelievers, is to prevent them from seeing the illuminating light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. And so Satan goes about looking who he can steal, kill, and destroy. He goes about as a prowling lion. The Bible says that. So all this suffering, all this a job loss, all this COVID, this pandemic, this fear, this is all from the pit of hell because Satan is the God of this world. But Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We are in it, but we're not part of it. Our, we are seated in heavenly places. We are children of the kingdom and we have authority over the powers of darkness Jesus has given us power over Satan and all his demons. And you need to rise up as a believer and start using your authority. You can rebuke the devil. The devil knows we as believers that the greater one is within us. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And you have to understand that. God has given us the victory. He's conquered everything, and we have to rise up in faith. You see, fear is the opposite of faith. You get in fear, you're going to start questioning who you are in Christ. Satan will come and ask you, who do you think you are? Well, I'll tell you what we tell him. I am a child of the Most High God, and we are to rule and reign in this earth in the name of Jesus. And so I know as we pray, and we trust God that our prayers are availing much. It's a time to pray and press in and fight the good fight. It's a good fight. It's a valuable, beautiful fight. Part of that word good is beautiful and valuable. And that's how God is. He's beautiful and valuable. And every gift he gives us, every good gift that comes from the Father is beautiful and valuable. And God has gifts that he wants to impart into our spirit. And so he wants us to be his voice. He wants us to be his hands. He wants us to be his feet and proclaim the good news, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. What I am preaching to you today is the gospel. It's good news. It's not negative. The world is negative. The news reports are negative. 
We are surrounded by negativity. But the gospel is good news. The gospel is what will inspire people. The gospel is the way out. Thank God for the good news. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the angels that are with us. Thank God for his word. Thank God for who he is. He's a good God. Amen. And so the goodness of God also leads people to repentance. In Romans 2 verse 4 it says, Do not despise the riches of his goodness, his forbearance and patience, not knowing it's the goodness of God that leads you to repentance. You know, there's times God, he's just so gracious. There's a scripture where he causes the rain to fall on the just and the unjust. And the, and the sun to shine on the just and the unjust. I mean, God is good. God is so patient and long-suffering and loving. And he's waiting for people to come to him. To surrender their lives to Jesus. The only way to the Father in John 14, Jesus said, is through him. He's the way. I already shared this scripture, but I'm sharing it again because maybe there's people watching this and you, you've never really heard the gospel. You don't know the way to the Father. The way to the Father is by surrendering your life, your heart, your will to Jesus Christ. He's the way to the Father. It's not through a religion. It's not through good works. It's through Jesus Christ. He's the only way to the Father. Amen. And so, goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our life. And then there's that beautiful word, mercy. God is so merciful. In the Hebrew, this word, mercy, is chekhet. And it means unfailing, loyal, covenant, love. It's found 248 times in the Word of God. And here's a beautiful scripture that I love. We used to sing a song about this years ago. Lamentations 3, verse 22 and 23. It says, Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. New every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Oh, I love that. Every morning you get up, God's mercy and compassion is new. You might have experienced it yesterday. You might have experienced it a year ago. But guess what? It's new today. God's mercy is unfailing. It's every day, every minute, every second. God is a good God and his mercy and his compassion. That's who he is. He's the person of love, the person of compassion, the person of grace, the person of keeping his covenant. He's a keeping, covenant-keeping God. He will never fail us. He'll always be with us. His goodness and his mercy will follow us all the days of our life. I love that. All the days. Not one time. Not five times. Every day we can expect God's goodness and mercy in our lives. But we have to exercise faith and believe God at his word and begin to experience it for ourselves. Amen. You know, then it says, his goodness and mercy follow me. I like that word follow. In the Hebrew, that means to pursue after with intent of over taking so the goodness and mercy have this they will overtake us they follow us they're pursuing after us god's goodness pursues us god's mercy pursues us those of us that love jesus that trust him that follow him that believe his word that worship him amen i've heard where before where god is the hound of heaven you see, when you begin to pray for loved ones, relatives, and people that you love, you love them so much, you don't want them to miss out on this great salvation. You begin to pray for them. God's compassion will start 
hounding them as the hound of heaven. God will pursue them. No one comes to the Father but by the Spirit. I know for me, someone was praying for me because God's love pursued me. I wasn't looking for him, but he was looking for me. He sought me out. He seeks us out and he saved me. And not only did he save me, but he's keeping me. And while he's keeping me, he's blessing me. And all this goodness and mercy follows me every day of my life. For the rest of my days until I'm with him face to face. I love that. Here's a beautiful scripture. It says in Psalm 139 verse 7 and 8. Where can I go from your spirit? David wrote this. Or where can I flee from your presence, O God? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. Jehovah Shammah. He's with us no matter where we are, no matter what we face, no matter what we're going through. He's in the boat. The storms come. He brings us safely to the other side. God is so good. And through it all, through it all, he's with us. And I'm going to pray right now. And there's a song that's going to be sung after this message. And I want you to listen to the words. This song uh, was a very popular song years ago. I was born again in 1974. And I remember um, these songs. And, and they, they just were powerful songs with an anointing. And the other day I remembered this song. And it's going to be sung after this, this message. And it's called Through It All by Andre Crouch. But the words are powerful. He's with us. And I want you to be encouraged. Encourage yourself. You know, David, even when David was alone and he was in the cave and he was hiding from Saul. And, and you know, the Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. And that's what we need to be doing. We need to encourage ourselves in the Lord. We need to read the word and we need to pray and sing spiritual songs and worship. And God's given us beautiful music to encourage us. And this song will really bless you. But before I leave you, I just want to pray. All right? Why don't we just bow our heads right now? Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Father, that your word ministers life to us. And it will not return void. And I thank you, Father, as we continue to walk in this life. And through these valleys, and even in the mountaintops, Lord, you are always with us. You never leave nor forsake us. And Father, I pray for anyone out there right now that has never made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of their life. I pray right now that the anointing would go through this uh, airwaves, and the anointing of God will touch their life, melt their heart, will they will where they will surrender to you. And I thank you, Father, that as they ask you to forgive them and to come into their heart and to forgive them of all their sins and save them, that you gloriously will save them where they can begin to walk with you, the Good Shepherd, the Lord of their life, that you have good things in store for them because you are a good God. You're our hope. You're our confidence. You're our everything. And we worship you. And we ask you, Father, to bless the people that are listening. Thank you for meeting every need out there. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Thank you that you are a God of supernatural means. That you are the miracle worker, the way maker. And Father, I just see blessings. The blessings coming to people's lives. In the name of Jesus, I declare, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. In Jesus' name. And they all said, Amen. Well, God bless you. It's wonderful to be with you. And I pray you have a wonderful week. And we'll see you next week. God bless you. <music>
I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There's been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave me blessed consolation. The trials come to only make me strong. I've been to lots of places. Seen lots of faces. There's been times I felt so alone. But in those lonely hours, all oh, those precious lonely hours, Jesus lets me know I was His own. Through it all, through. Thank you, Mama Lynn, for your message on goodness and mercy. Now, for our announcements. First, our uh, faith seeker. Again, it's every Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. We'll have it virtually through Zoom. And the Zoom link will be provided in our faith seeker group chat. We encourage you to join us and pray for our church and for our nation. Second, our uh, Titan offering. Let's have it deposited in our Maybank account, which is Word of Grace Fellowship Incorporated. And our account number is 00039500-1763. Again, it's 00039500-1763. Third, our food bank project. We praise the Lord because we have reached more of our indigent members. Aside from our guards, maintenance staff, and the members that we have reached before, we now have uh, uh, reached uh, Pastor LP and Pastor Otik. The Bargamento family, Lola Flor, our children's church teachers, such as Lori, Grace, Mary Jane, and Joanne, and also Brother Willie and Brother Manny. We continue to ask for your support and prayer. We hope to help our indigent members as we face this uh, extension of the ECQ. And finally, I would like to encourage you with this verse, Joshua chapter 1, verse 9 from the New King James Version. It says here, Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. This message is also applicable to us, especially now uh, in this uh, extension of the ECQ. 
Let us be strong. In Hebrew, it means to seize, to bind, and to conquer. And to be of good courage, which is to be alert physically and mentally. To be steadfast, so that we'll be able to prevail uh, the crisis that we are uh, experiencing. And the assurance is God is with us. Wherever we go, even in our own houses, God is with us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness, your mercy. Thank you for inspiring us to be of good courage and to be strong, especially during this time of uh, pandemic. Let your spirit be with us. Give us wisdom. Give us sound mind. And let us be alert as well. And to pray and intercede, especially for our government, for our loved ones, and even for, for our nation. Lord, we trust you, Lord God. You are in control. And uh, with you, we will overcome. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great Sunday, friends, and have a good week. And we hope to see you soon face-to-face. -face. God bless.